Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and the star of today's show is going to be an Abu Garcia Kingfisher 43 uh, spin fishing reel. This one's got a couple of interesting features on it, but it's got a story behind it, which is why I decided to do this. Normally, you wouldn't see a reel like this come into my shop uh, for a lot of reasons. One, they kind of were disposable reels. They're low-end reels. The price of the service uh, would probably be prohibitive in terms of the value of the reel. These are simply just not worth that much. The age of the reel, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. And uh, well, just generally the usage of the reel. But here's a couple of unique features on it. One of them, this is the trip lever over here for the bale. So you're actually going to see an external trip lever versus an internal one. You'll see there's a slot on the back of the bale arm here. And when you rotate that, it's going to move the trip lever over, and then when it releases, it's going to jump back. The uh, other interesting feature here is that you actually have an anti-reverse override. In other words, it'll stop here, but if you move the switch here from on to off, you can backpedal the reel. Very interesting features on a low-end reel. Well, before I go much further, I want to take a moment and ask you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That way you'll be able to see when I'm posting the videos, which I try to do daily. And you'll be able to see which ones you like. This one is very unusual for me, uh, for the reasons I just noted. But, well, some days you'll see, well, maybe you'll see this one. It'll be, it's on my dock to do some point. This is an Abu Ambassador 6600 C4. Uh, you might find an old vintage one like this, which is a Pen Jigmaster 500 from the 70s. Or you may just find a freshwater low-profile baitcaster, a uh, large spinning reel, or anything in between. Uh, it depends on what shows up in my shop. So here's the story on this one. A fellow that I know, good friends with, uh, dropped it off. He said, I know you don't normally work on these. Would you like to have this reel to do for a video? Well, who am I to say no, right? Uh, there might be somebody out there who has this reel who wants to see it. How uh, it's uh, serviced? Why not, right? If I have a spare moment. Well, I do them for videos, not just for uh, fun and profit, if you will. So, a little bit of a story on uh, Garcia and Abu Garcia. Garcia was founded by Charles Garcia in the 1940s. He was an import-export agent in New York City, and uh, he basically was working on, uh, well, silkworm gut, which was for suturing. And uh, he uh, sent some representatives over to France, one of those representatives, which was his partner's son, uh, well, they, they brought back some fishing reels made by Mitchell. And it was such a success and a hit here that Garcia went back there and negotiated the distribution rights for Mitchell in the U.S. And, uh, well, you saw all of the ones, all the Mitchells that were marketed here were marketed under uh, Mitchell Garcia or Garcia Mitchell. And... Garcia never made a reel. Garcia was simply a sporting goods, it turns out, he went away from sutures, became a sporting goods distributor rather than the uh, manufacturer. So he never made a reel, or Garcia never made a reel. How did Abu Garcia come in? Well, Abu Garcia came in because Abu wanted distribution of their round bait casters. That's why this one has been sitting on my desk now. It's not the one. But in, in the 1940s, uh, late 1940s, post-war, they were looking for a U.S. distributor. You'll see it says Abu Garcia there. We'll get there in a moment. But in the uh, late 1940s, they wanted a distributor. When Abu started making spinning wheels, they couldn't use Garcia for the distributor because Garcia had the exclusive uh, distribution with Mitchell. But they did use Garcia to distribute their round bait casters. So that's why you see Abu Garcia on that. Well, there's some reels out there that you see that just say Garcia. Now, this is an Abu Garcia Kingfisher, but some of these you'll see will just say Garcia Kingfisher. Well, those were reels that were made by neither Abu or Mitchell. They were made for Garcia by another company. And uh, many of those, well, probably the, the Kingfisher series were made in Korea. Uh, and those were reels that Garcia independently contracted for. Well... How did all of that happen? In 1978, Garcia discontinued its relationship with Mitchell. Garcia had financial problems, basically went bankrupt. 
when they dis uh, when they discontinued their relationship with Mitchell, they did for a period of time make wheels that were simply branded as Garcia. And when you see those, that was uh, they almost looked like Mitchells. They were 3000 series instead of 300, but very much mimicked the uh, Mitchells that they had stopped distributing. Right? Well, from 78 to about 80 or 81, they kind of floundered, didn't do well. And in 1980, I think it was 1980, Abu bought Garcia, just the distributor, basically bought the name. And that's when you see a, a reel like this, the Kingfisher, which was a Garcia brand not made by uh, Abu or Mitchell, have the Abu tag on it because in the 80s, Abu owned the brand Abu and changed it over to Abu Garcia. Well, I think this probably tells that story, right? Because if I look, it says made in Korea. And what's on the sole plate? 82-0. My guess, and it would be a guess, is this reel was made in 1982. This was the first version of the reel made in Korea. And uh, it's amazing what you can get when a friend hands you a reel and says, I thought maybe you would like to do a video on it. So let's, uh, let's do the regular video. Let's show you how it's made. We already pointed out two unique features, the exterior bail trip and the override. I'm kind of curious to see how that override works. We're going to take off our exterior pieces. As we do that, I want to encourage you to uh, ask questions. If you have a question about this real history, maybe the real itself, maybe you own one of these things, uh, whatever. If you leave that in the comment section, I'll try and answer it for you. You can see it's a low quality reel. That uh, metal washer in the drag stack is rusted down. I didn't test it, but we probably don't have much of a drag stack there. My guess is we're going to have a uh, Teflon washer under there, but we'll get to that in a moment. This does not have a rotor nut, which means it's held on by a clip inside the main casing. So we'll get to that in a moment. Let's remove the handle. That screws off in a clockwise manner. And then there's three case screws here. Now these case screws can be taken off with a um, Phillips head screwdriver or it can be taken off with a flat blade, whatever works for you. I'm going to take these off and I'm going to lay them on my table. And interestingly, this has all of the characteristics of a Korean made reel, including that silver body and the paint that bubbles. And it's just, if you find a Daiwa from the time made in Korea, if certainly if you find a, a, a pen 100 series, if it was made in Korea, uh, or the one that's in Japan for that matter, the Ryobi series and the like, uh, the paint seemed to be the downfall of all of them. Let's remove that, see what we have underneath. These three screws were the same, so I'm going to take them, I'll put that into my part tray, and I'll know where to find it when it's time to reinstall. The part tray is the bottom of a fast food container. This should simply be a pin here that's going to allow me to remove the uh, axle shaft, pull that pin, and then we should be able to pull up and out on the axle shaft. Next up then, we can remove the crosswind block and other than the, uh, uh, the overall appearance of this reel, uh, I would say that it's working fine. It just needs some grease and some oils. So let's do that. Here's that clip I was referring to. It's a U-clip. It holds the rotor in. All of these pieces and parts go into that parts tray. It's just a nice central repository, so I know where to find it when it's time to do that. All right, here's your pinion gear. It's attached. It's part of the rotor. It's not a separate one. There are no ball bearings in this reel. Another indication of a low-cost reel. And uh, they use the case rather than bushings. And uh, they just uh, have it set up that way so that uh, it's, a, it's a smaller reel. Uh, stream or pond. You don't need a lot of ball bearings for that. And again, if you're trying to manage cost, that's a good way to do it. So I've just uh, ran a scraper through uh, to pull out some of the, uh, the dry greases. Now I'm just knocking them off with a, a hard bristle brush. This one happens to be a brass brush. And making sure that it's clean. That's kind of central to all real servicing and repair. Next up I'm going to flood the junctions of the bail arm. And in this case I'm going to flood underneath. 
I'm going to use a penetrating oil to do that because I want to make sure that it trips nice and easy. And again, you can see how this lever works. It's going to be set this way. It will hit this stud over here. That will push it back and that will allow the bale to trip. I can't do it by hand strength, but trust me, that will work. Oh, there we go. All right. I can do it by hand strength. And then this is another indication that the reel is a, a rather less expensive reel. You have rust on the bale wire. Somebody had just asked me about that. What can you do? You can smile. That's all you can do with this. And you probably won't even find, if this was 1982, you won't find a replacement bale wire for it. I doubt if you could find a replacement bale wire for this in 1983. Uh, most of these low-end reels do not have parts uh, or service support to them. All right, let's push the main gear out then. When you do that, please make sure that you take this anti-reverse dog and you have it in the off position, conveniently labeled off here. If you have it in, there's a chance that it will get stuck on this click side of the main gear. And if it gets stuck, you're gonna pop the spring. And if you pop the spring, you're gonna to have to figure out where it goes and how it goes and uh, well why if you can avoid that by just simply backing off the switch all right we're just going to do a little bit of scraping here first you can see that there is no ball bearing back there that it's simply a uh, a case that's been reinforced and acting as a bushing flood it and then i'm going to use a cotton swab to do the rest of the cleanup I cleaned up nicely. There's not much to, to, to mess with there. And then I want to grab my fishing reel oil. The oil that I use is Pen Precision Reel Oil. I use it in a little oiler just because it's convenient to me. I'm just noticing I got a little bit more dirt here. So let's get that out while we can. All right, here's your main gear. I'm going to do the same thing here. There's a little bit of dried grease onto the the face of the main gear. So we're going to do the same thing. A little bit of penetrating oil to break it up. Grab your cotton swab and then grab your brush. You can use a toothbrush for this if you like. But clean out those channels in the teeth because if it's holding the crease it's going to be like hitting a speed bump on a road. You'll just get an uneven performance to it. All right. Check all the teeth that way. Check the teeth this way as points. Check the back me. Make sure that's all clean. And then re-grease. I'm using Pen Precision Real Grease for this. That's the blue grease. I guess I can do that now. Uh, pen uh, or Pure Fishing owns Pen. It also owns Abu Garcia. So I guess they're family members. All right. And let's just get some grease onto the main shaft here. And we can go reinstall. And put that back in. You have to put that back in before you can put the rotor on. I want to make sure that that's set to off. I noticed that I was riding a little high on that. I probably had uh, just kicked it out of the way. All right, let's do the same thing here. We have a nice clean shaft here. So let's go ahead and put the grease onto the pinion gear. A little bit onto the neck, which is going to ride inside the hole in the, the case, which is acting as a bushing. And we used penetrating oil to clear it, but let's use real fishing reel oil on the trip assembly. And you do not need to remove the bale wire unless that bale wire is not working. So keep your hands off of it and save yourself some trouble. All right. We've just reinstalled the rotor. Now we can get the little cap. So I don't know what, what contractor made these, but this, this looks a little bit like a Daiwa setup or a Ryobi setup. All right, and then this is how you put the U-clip in to hold the 
pinion gear in place, just like that, and then the case is going to hold that in place, so you don't have to worry about it too much. I'm going to clean up our cross wind block next. And I believe as I did it, it was set this way, but we're going to have to test that. Now this is where you should take pictures. I'm taking pictures. If I really get stuck, I'm going to go back and figure out that I have it upside down. I'm going to, I'm going to guess on this one. I'm going to put that tag on the downside. But this is not a symmetrical block. And it could, if you mount it the one way and it's wrong, it's going to bump into something. So we'll, before we go too much further, it's a simple changeover. So let's get a little bit of grease onto the shaft. You don't want to put too much on there because the shaft uh, is going to get screwed. It's just going to scrape off. It's held tightly in there. Let's bring this down, find the hole, and then align the hole with the hole to accept the pin. And then let's put the pin in. And don't trust your memory. Take the pictures. Don't be afraid to, to admit that you got it wrong. There we go. That's back in. And now to test before I go any further, I want to rotate this and make sure that I'm not bouncing off that or bouncing off of this. I'm not, so I guess I had a 50-50 chance of getting it right. And this time luck was in my favor. And now let's switch the anti-reverse to make sure that's hammering correctly. You can see how that's working. We can go ahead and put the handle back on. Now this is going to go back on in the direction you will be reeling. So it's going to go back on in a, in a counterclockwise manner. So here's your operation of the reel. Simple, effective, <laughs> what a smooth reel. I don't think that uh, the fellow that gave me this realized that uh, this reel is going to have a second chance. It's going fishing again. I guess that grease that had mounted up behind that main gear had probably caused the performance problem. And I guess that just became one of these. Uh, one, I can't find anybody to fix it. Two, it's going to cost me too much to fix it. And three, it's an old reel, throw it away. Uh, well, that's not the premise behind Second Chance Tackle. The premise behind Second Chance Tackle is let's learn from these things. Let's teach you how to do it yourself. Let's kind of spark your curiosity and your ingenuity. Show you how to do it yourself. And uh, if you enjoy the hobby, well, this is kind of what I'm aiming at here. I'm trying to pass along what I know while I can pass it along. I've been doing this a long time now. Although I got to be honest with you, I did not buy this real new and I can't recall being sold new. So there you go. Although I should. All right, let's just test that bail. Look at that. Even the bail fires nicely. So let's just go over here. The last thing left then is the spool. As I mentioned, it's, it's got basic metal uh, steel or some kind of metal that rusts. I'm going to pull the pin out. This has kind of got an odd set of wiring. Let's flush the inside of this cavity. Same idea. I use the penetrating oil a lot for uh, cleanup. I use it more as a degreaser. I very rarely use it as a lubricant. I've probably said it before. The only thing I've used penetrating oil for as a lubricant is on a bicycle chain and even there it seems to gather a lot of stuff up. Well what do we have here? We do have a drag washer. It's kind of a cork washer it appears and it's seized to the uh, metal washer rusted in which means that it's not an effective drag because it's not moving. So I'm going to just run a a utility knife there. The utility knife is going to act as a wedge and separate the two. I noticed that this came off the bottom. We have one washer which is perfectly fine for a, uh, a reel that's not going to need a lot of drag. I'm going to refresh the washer. I'm using fishing reel dry grease, Cal's Universal Dry Grease. We'll refresh that. Place that back in. And now I'm going to grab a flat file and try and knock 
the uh, rust off of that drag brush here. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care about the, the chroming at all. Nobody's going to see it anyway. It's inside the, the spool. What I do care about is if you leave the, the rust on there, it's got pits on it. And that pit is going to tear into the drag washer. And if it tears into the drag washer, it's going to rip it up. So I would much prefer to just kind of knock it off. Those of you that uh, want to sand it, you can certainly sand it. I'm just concerned that it just stays smooth. And I pretty much got that done now. All right, and let's just wipe that down. Now for an extra layer of protection, if you will, I can put a little bit of fishing reel grease on there. Why not? Right? It's not going to hurt it. And if you put some on the back, it'll only get absorbed. So why are we putting grease on that, that uh, drag washer anyway? It's because you want to keep it fresh. And the way you keep it fresh is because it's an absorbent, uh, porous material. And if you get grease into those pores, it keeps it from drying out and cracking and from uh, breaking on you. So it doesn't look much better, but it's going to perform much better now that we've separated it. All right, here we go. We're going to put the spool back on. It would be a shame not to clear, clean up that drag knob because, well, everything else has been cleaned on the wheel. We go. All right, let's put the button back on. What a fun little reel. I'm going to give it back to the fellow who gave it to me. Let him decide what to do with it. All right, right now we don't have a drag. Now we have a lightly operating one. Now we have a tightly operating one. So that, if we back it off, right, we got a drag again. All right, so that's that's how you restore the drag if you have an issue with the drag washer. Let's give it a ride. Oh my gosh. Wow. So I can't wait to give this back to him. He's not going to believe it. We've got a story of the show. We've got a story to tell you about the Garcia uh, business. And we've got a fun little reel here. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I was, uh, that, that succeeds my expectations. I thought that it was going to be a whole different story uh, when we got done servicing that reel. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my first responder and uh, essential personnel friends out there that have been keeping us safe. I do appreciate it. To everyone, uh, please stay watching. Uh, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, to those of you who have subscribed, thank you very much. Please pay attention to the shorts that I'm loading. I, uh, I'm doing fishing reels of the day. Guess what? This one's going to be a fishing reel of the day. And uh, to everybody, Please enjoy the art of fishing, enjoy real repair, take time with uh, your friends, what fishing uh, kind of brings to everybody in terms of enjoyment, and have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Talk.